Hey guys, welcome to another eBay repair video. This one's going to be a bit longer and more involved, so I want to add a little bit more structure to it. And uh, We're going to be taking a look at this Xbox that has uh, some powering issues. Uh, specifically, it powers on instantly when I plug it in, and it has a non-functioning power button. So those are the two problems we want to tackle. I want to just go ahead and test it right now and show you like what I've got so far. So I'm going to plug everything in. Well, not everything. I'm going to plug in the fan and the motherboard power because we don't really need to test the DVD drive functionality or anything like that. So it's, let's just see what happens when we put the main power in and we'll go from there. Okay, so I plugged in the fan, the motherboard power, and the power and eject board is plugged in as well. So now we just gotta plug it into the wall and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like one of the problems just miraculously went away. It is no longer powering on instantly when I plug it in. So I guess problem number one is salt. I don't know why. Um, but let's try the power button. Yep, that's still broken. Not doing anything. We can still power on with the eject button. So that's something. So we're gonna just work on that one power button issue. And I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna diagnose the problem. We're going to look at a few common places where we might see some kind of damage and uh, try to diagnose what exactly is wrong with the motherboard. So once you have the motherboard completely removed, uh, one area you should always look at first is this one right here. This is where the clock capacitor used to be. It was on the board when I first got it, but I removed it. Um, if you don't know anything about the clock capacitor, uh, just to sum up, it is a faulty capacitor that you don't need so you should always remove it no matter what you just don't need it and if you leave it on your board it will start leaking acid and will eventually destroy it it's probably the most common way that xboxes are uh, ruined so you definitely want to take care of this i already removed it once i saw it i didn't want to waste any time and i went over the area with vinegar to clean up any of the corrosion. It, it did start corroding a little bit. It started leaking. But I cleaned it up. I put uh, cleaned it with some more rubbing alcohol. So now it's tip top. I don't think this area is of any concern to us. Because the damage is not extensive. And I don't see any traces that are visibly damaged. So this area looks good. That's probably not our issue. Since the power, bo the power button excuse me, still doesn't work. So, my next step is to probably check other places on the board, uh, just check for any visible damage, any cracks. And I looked over the front side and I didn't see anything that was out of place. The other capacitors are also not visibly bulging. That's another thing you gotta watch out for. When the caps are going bad, they start to bulge a little bit and start to become more conical at the top. But all of these look fine. So we're going to flip it over and take a look at the back and check to see if there's any damage here. Again, I don't really see anything wrong with it. Um, so at this point, I decided to do some Google searches. I pretty much believe that Google is the repairman's saving grace. Uh, if you don't see the problem, staring at you right in the face, then you definitely have to turn to Google and hope that somebody has had the problem before you and solved it. And I was right. So I searched uh, something to the effect of original Xbox, um, power on when plugged in or something like that. And I found this thread uh, on the isozone.com. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. I'm pretty much going to follow this uh, this repair guide to a T and this is going to be my first time doing this kind of repair so you can definitely follow along 
on that thread that's still up there. It's by a user named Dark Matter, and I'm going to read a little bit off of it to help us diagnose the problem. Uh, he says, I got a request for a member to do this tutorial on version 1.2 or 1.3 motherboards on the trace corrosion issue. Uh, and he says some of the symptoms of this uh, issue is the number one, the Xbox fails to power down using the power on and off button on the front panel. Check number one. That's our problem. Two, as soon as the power cord is plugged in, the Xbox powers up without pressing the on or off or eject buttons. So that also kind of checked because that was happening to me, even though it's not happening right now. And number three, while the Xbox is powered on for a certain amount of time, it will shut down by itself for no reason. The time factor before shutdown can vary. I haven't experienced this because I just got this uh, board and I haven't played around with it too much. I have no doubt that that might happen to me if I tried. Long story short, uh, he describes that version 1.2 and 1.3 motherboards, which is the one I have right now in front of me, uh, they have this common issue in the very particular part of the board. I'll try to zoom in on it now. Over there, you see in the top left corner, you see some of these traces have turned black. And these traces are responsible for uh, transferring power around the board. And since these are damaged, it definitely explains why we're having such um, powering issues. So we've all but confirmed what our issue is. We have this thread that's explaining these uh, common symptoms that we're experiencing. It's telling us exactly where on the motherboard these problems happen. And everything has matched up so far. The only thing left for us to do to confirm is to get a multimeter and test the continuity on those traces. Uh, we're going to test all the traces in that area. There's about five of them. And if there is no continuity between any one of those traces, then we can say for sure that that's probably what we need to fix. So I'm going to take my multimeter now, and we're going we're gonna to figure out if that's for sure what's going on. Alright, this is this really cheap multimeter I picked up. If you're not as cheap as me, uh, the continuity test will give you a beep every time you have a successful continuity. If not, you won't get a beep. For this one, uh, it just shows a bunch of numbers if there is uh, continuity. If there's not, you'll just get a 1 with no decimal points like that. Okay, so you can follow along on the thread I posted, uh, but I'm just going to test each trace one at a time and see if there's continuity. There's five over there in total, and I'm going to put one probe on one side, on one of the points, and one probe on the other, and then we're going to see if there's continuity. So starting with trace A. On trace A, I see nothing. So this trace is probably bad. Alright, trace B is this one right here. And it goes to this point on the right, right there. That one looks no good as well. Trace C is located over here. And we're gonna go over here. Okay, so we got some numbers for trace C. So that's probably fine. And now we're going to test uh, number four. So we're going to put one end over here. This is a thicker trace. Okay. So trace D is fine as well. So it looks like we're going to have to bridge two of these broken traces. And I'll describe how we're going to do that right now. This picture is a good example of uh, a broken trace, and traces are uh, very, very tiny pathways all over the, your motherboard that will essentially just lead a signal from point A to point B, from one component to another component. Underneath these little uh, pathways is copper, and sometimes the copper will get exposed. Uh, the protective layer on top of the motherboard might get weak, and the copper will start to oxidize, it'll corrode, eventually the trace will be broken, like what you see in the picture. 
So what we're going to do is try and bridge those two points again uh, using a wire. What makes this method very convenient is that the trace can be broken in several places, several locations, uh, but it wouldn't matter because we're going to simply bypass all of those broken connections and make a straight connection from point A to point B. The only negative is that this job is a little bit harder than it seems. The points that we're soldering together are very, very small. And likewise, the wire needs to be very, very thin to make a good connection. And handling the wire that thin uh, is kind of tricky. Here's uh, some of the materials you're going to need if you're doing this repair. Uh, some wrapping wire, 30 gauge or less. It has to be very, very thin because these are very thin points that we're joining together. You're going to need some solder. I really recommend the rosin core. And you're going to need a soldering iron. You can use a $10 soldering iron or you can use a nicer soldering iron if you want to make life easy for yourself. But if you want to live life on hard mode, that's completely up to you. Okay, the next part is to cut an appropriate length of wire and then strip the ends of it so you have exposed wire at each end. Now, what's going to be very difficult for you probably is to strip the wire uh, without cutting the wire on the inside. Uh, I, I use a small blade that's not very sharp and I just went back and forth on the blade maybe like two or three times and that was enough to break the insulation and then I used a pair of needle nose pliers to gently wiggle the uh, insulation right off and now I have a very nice exposed wire right there. Uh, so I'm going to expose, I'm going to strip the wires on both ends for this one and on the other one. Okay, here's the hard part. We're going to tin each wire to help them stick. And to do that, I'm going to get some flux to help me out. This is a flux pen. So it's going to help me get the solder onto the wires. So I'm going to lightly go over this end of the wire and this end with the pen. Now I'm going to bend the wire at 90 degrees like so. I'm going to grab my soldering iron and we're going to attempt to tin the wire. It worked. Okay, let's do the other side. Alright, now I'm going to attempt to get it in the right via the first time. Hopefully not make any mistakes. You want to add some uh, solder to the via first before you even bring the wire to it. Uh, it's just generally a good idea to do that first. Okay, so I apologize in advance. I don't have a professional video camera. Uh, this is the best footage I can get of me soldering the actual wires into place. Uh, when I was soldering the other end, it really didn't come out that great, so I ended up deciding to cut that part of the video out. But here you can get a pretty good shot of me getting one of the wires onto the solder joint and uh, then moving on to the second one. Okay, so that was incredibly messy uh, and difficult. I'm finally finished. I couldn't really get any good footage of me doing it because the points were so small that I could not get my camera to zoom in that much. But I'll show you the finished product. I have two wires soldered in there. I'll bring it up closer. 
there it is two wires and then the other ends go over here uh, I just tested it with the multimeter and both of them both wires check out there's continuity so now I'm gonna throw it back into my hex box and pray to God that this works I almost forgot you definitely want to get some electrical tape and tape all these wires down and make sure they're not moving around. That's definitely something you should not forget to do. Alright, so I got the motherboard back in. It's plugged in. And here we go. And the power button works. We did it. Let me test it again by turning it off. Um... Okay, it works. I mean, it's just a little stubborn. But yeah, there you go. That's how we re that's how we fix trace corrosion and powering on problems on the original Xbox. Hope you enjoy the video.